Is AI art art? Is AI art forgery? Is AI art plagiarism? These are the questions I will seek to answer in this video. I was first introduced to the idea of AI art through the comic book artists and concept artists that I follow on various social media. They would complain about AI art being forgery or plagiarism of their styles. These artists are very justifiably worried that AI art will dilute their revenue streams. You spend your entire life building a skill and growing a talent only to have some cheap and lazy asshole use AI to forge your artwork. Plagiarism and forgery are not new in the art world. They're centuries old and still happen all the time. In the 90s, comic book artist Joe Maggiorera had his style swiped by a guy named Roger Cruz, who was already swiping Jim Lee before that. Joe Mad noticed this swiping and drew a graffito saying Cruz swipes again in one of his panels. Recently, there's a guy named Daniel Hilliard whose style is a bit too similar to Ryan Otley. This kind of style jacking takes skill in and of itself, but AI will allow completely talentless people to create art in any style they wish, even if that style belongs to another person who relies on his or her talent to make money. One of the earliest examples I saw online of AI art forgery was the Sam Does Arts controversy. Some asshole sponsored an AI art contest to see who could generate the best Sam Does Art style images. Though Sam is quite good, his style is fairly simple and easily replicated by AI. When Sam reached out to the guy, the guy responded with pure assholery. Just read this nonsense. If I was Sam, I'd be in jail right now. There were other assholes online saying things like, How dare people ask me what my prompts are? My prompts are very personal to me. If you know what a prompt is, you should know how stupid that sounds. There was another guy online saying that AI art was going to democratize art. How do you democratize a talent or a skill? Now anyone can make art that was already possible. It was just a matter of whether or not that art was any good, which was based on how much work the artist put into becoming good. Some people seem to think that it's unfair that a person who practices a thing is good at a thing, but a person who doesn't practice a thing isn't good at a thing. They don't like the idea that becoming good at something requires practice, training, and time. They just want to be good right now without having to put the work in. As a quick tangent, I've also heard people make the argument that new technology will allow more people entry into the world of art in the form of virtual reality headset tours of museums, which sounds great. I have no problem with this. But these people making these arguments don't seem to recognize that there is a barrier to entry in the form of the price of a decent VR headset. Do you really want people going on tours of museums looking at all this beautiful artwork in 720p? After seeing the opinions of actual artists online that AI art was forgery and plagiarism, and after seeing plenty of examples of AI being used to facilitate forgery and plagiarism, I came to the conclusion that AI art was forgery or plagiarism, specifically forgery, and I argued that point online. You can see me doing this in the common exchange scrolling on the side of the screen. You can read that if you want. I've actually changed my mind since this exchange, but I still think this guy's an asshole. Here he says good artists will never be out of work, but he seems to concede that point later on. He does not concede that AI art is forgery or plagiarism, but he does, without directly saying it, seem to concede that AI art can be used to facilitate forgery or plagiarism. But he seems to have a kind of a, ah well, fuck you, attitude towards the artist that will be hurt by it. He compares AI art to the automation of manual and low skill labor jobs. I don't think you can compare the automation of, say, fruit picking to the destruction of an entire field of, a, of an intellectual pursuit. The entire reason why art is art, why a piece of art is impressive, is because a person made it. I guess that answers the first question. Look at this Japanese math class. These 12 year olds have learned how to multiply six digit numbers by six digit numbers in their heads. I've seen pieces of AI art that I thought were aesthetically pleasing, and I've thought to myself that I would be impressed by this if it were done by a person. But I'm no more impressed by AI art prompters than I would be by someone comparing themselves to these kids while using a calculator. Before I answer the other two questions, I want to make it known how I feel about AI art prompters. In the TV show Rome, the character Brutus, along with some others, kills the character Caesar. You may be familiar with this story. In exile and looking to make friends, a drunken Brutus brags about how he killed the tyrant Caesar. It was necessary to save Rome. He took this responsibility, this burden, on his own shoulders and all this type of nonsense. A foreigner says to him, I understand there were a great many who stabbed your Caesar. Perhaps I shall find a fresh corpse to stab and become great myself. You AI prompters are stabbing the fresh corpses of real artists and proclaiming yourselves great. You type words into a text field and act like you've accomplished something. And some of you have the balls to monetize this shit. Look at this nonsense here. 
This is the guy or girl, I don't really know, who prompted the AI image I showed earlier. Commissions open. The balls on this As I said in my earlier thread, if you've used an AI image generator to make art, you haven't made art. You've commissioned art. Say you want an image of a woman sitting in a field of tall grass at night with the moon behind her and maybe a wolf on the other side of the screen, whatever. If you use an AI image generator to make that art for you, you have done no more work in creating that image than if you asked an actual artist to paint it for you. Actual artists will often post speed painting and speed drawing videos on YouTube. I commented to this person, post a process video on YouTube of how you make this art, something like a speed painting video. I want to see exactly how much human creativity is being combined with AI technology to create these new worlds. I was blocked by this person within two minutes because this person knows that they're full of shit. Come on, you have to know you're full of shit doing this. The shamelessness of selling something that you didn't create, that you can't even copyright because AI art is not even copyrightable. I'm reminded of a story I heard a couple of years back about a young woman who wrote Harry Potter fan fiction and posted it online. And then somebody took that fan fiction, changed the names of the characters and locations and changed the setting from a magic setting to a future technology setting and then had that book published. And the original author of that particular work had no recourse to sue because they didn't own the original characters anyway. So the only person that would have had the right to sue would be J.K. Rowling. And she's not going to take time out of her busy schedule to file a lawsuit on behalf of some fanfic author. Watch this video. We believe artists should be protected against this type of economic harm. And we propose Congress establish a new federal anti-impersonation right that would give artists a right to enforce against someone intentionally attempting to impersonate their style or likeness. Holding people accountable who misuse AI tools is a solution we believe goes to the heart of some of the issues our customers have. And this new right would help address that concern. I don't know what you heard from that clip, but I didn't hear all this. And once again, I get blocked by a coward. I swear to you, I haven't been blocked by that many people. I can think of four off the top of my head. And whenever I do get blocked, it's over the mildest shit. Just a quick interjection. It might be the case that the artists I showed earlier just want to create a layer of separation between their art and any AI art that gets posted on platforms like DeviantArt or ArtStation that any AI art posted should be clearly labeled as AI art and maybe there should be a kind of toggle switch like some websites have a safe search switch that users can use to filter out AI in their searches. I don't think AI art deserves to be treated with the same level of reverence, respect, or prestige as real art from real artists. So if I were a pro artist, I wouldn't want AI to be displayed right next to my art on the front page of any of these gallery websites. I remember when I was in third grade, I drew something and I brought it to school and people were like, no, no, that's too good. You trace that. And I was like, what? I'll kill you. So, you know, I understand how artists can take this stuff seriously. AI users in general are spoiled and entitled assholes. I think this story deserves honorable mention. This person, whose name I, I can't pronounce, made a stop motion Scooby-Doo cartoon and used AI to approximate the voices of Shaggy and Scooby. Let's read. Person whose name I can't pronounce used AI the way it's supposed to be as a tool in a personal project, which was good. That's debatable, by the way. Several people jump on him for not spending money he didn't have on voice actors who also jump on him like a bunch of bullies. I'll get back to the AI as a tool later. A reasonable person said, is not having money an excuse to use someone else's voice without permission, though? That seems like a flimsy reason to me. Moron then responds, and what's he supposed to do? Get someone to voice it and it doesn't come out the way he wants it to sound? How fucking spoiled and entitled is this? If you don't have the money to pay voice actors, which no one would expect from you because this is just fan art, then do the voice yourself or ask a friend. And if the voice isn't perfect, which no one would expect from you because this is just fan art, they know fucking well. Just because you would prefer your cartoon to sound accurate doesn't give you the right to steal people's voices. The stuff I draw never comes out right. If you saw my last video, you've seen some of my artwork, which isn't very good. I wanted to be a comic book artist when I was a kid, but I was too lazy to put the practice in and I never became good enough to get to a pro level. But I still draw a little bit and I'm nowhere near as good as I'd like to be. But because I have something called dignity, the thought never occurred to me that I could use AI to improve a piece of artwork that I've already drawn. This is something you can do. So far, I've only talked about using AI to generate images from scratch. But you can drag and drop your art into these programs to incorporate your art into the image generation process. There is a video on YouTube called 
The Biggest Lie About AI Art by a guy named Shadiversity. While I don't like this guy because, on his Twitter, he likes to pretend that generating images with AI takes skill, this video did make me think about what AI art really is. Is AI art forgery or plagiarism? The answer is, possibly. AI art is art generated by an AI art generator. The AI art generator is a tool, and tools are used by people. The art a person generates with an AI art generator may or may not resemble the style of a known real artist, but that would depend on the person using the tool. I could use a knife to butter bread or stab somebody. Either way, the knife is still just a tool. You could use AI to forge or plagiarize someone else's work, or you could use it to make your own shitty artwork slightly less shitty. Personally, I'd rather stay shitty than stoop so low, but to each his own, I guess. Maybe someone could make an argument that AI art generators are less butter knife and more combat knife, but such arguments would involve getting deep in the weeds about exactly how these AI art generators learn how to make art, and would also assume a lot about the intent of the programmers of these generators. And I just don't feel like getting into that shit right now. As I said in this earlier comment thread, in forgery, someone's name is stolen in order to add value to the wrong work. In plagiarism, someone's work is stolen in order to give credit to the wrong author. To make it even more simple, forgery requires that a person make the claim that the art they've made in somebody else's style was actually done by that other person in order to add value to the art. Plagiarism requires that someone make the claim that the art they've stolen from somebody else was done by they themselves in order to get credit for making the art. As long as an AI art prompter does not make these specific claims, then they have not, technically, committed forgery or plagiarism. It used to be that this type of forgery took some level of skill in and of itself. Now AI allows a person with no skill to generate a piece of art in someone else's style. AI art is not inherently forgery, nor is it inherently plagiarism. But I also believe it is not art because it is not truly made by a person. And as for whether or not there's a benefit to the public from the existence of these generators, other than the dramatic increase in the quality of Rule 34 shit, no, there is no benefit. Every once in a while, I'll see an actual creative professional talk about how much creativity there is out in the world among the fandom. They want to make creative tools available to the general public, and they put out stuff like PlayStation's Dreams. And what do we get from PlayStation's Dreams? Mario levels. We've already had people using Flash to make impossibly difficult Mario levels for decades. Now we're just doing it in 3D. And how many times have you heard of someone using Unreal Engine to remake Ocarina of Time or Mario 64? Do we ever get anything creative, exciting, or original from the general public? No. Anytime you hear of a small group of people getting together to make some indie game, they always tend to be people who left a bigger company to form a smaller company and do their own thing, i.e. working professionals who've been in the business for years. You might think these AI tools will be of some benefit to the younger generations coming up. So many more people who would otherwise be flipping burgers are going to be allowed to express themselves in creative and artistic ways. Uh, fucking bullshit, man. This stuff is going to destroy real human creativity. Because of the existence of these AI tools, less people are going to take the time to hone their skills. Why bother take the years to train yourself to become good in anything when you can just skip to the finish line? It was already bad enough when we had overzealous fans tweeting at real authors to tell them all about how the half-baked fan fiction they have trapped in their skulls is better than the real author's current run on any given book he's writing. Or telling that real author about how morally wrong they are for not incorporating into the real canon of the actual story their bullshit Rule 34 inspired fanfic shipping of two characters that have no business actually being together. Now these completely uncreative people are going to be vomiting their prompts all over the internet and proclaiming themselves to be creative geniuses. I'll end with a quote from the late author Christopher Hitchens. It has been said that everyone has at least one book in them. And in the case of most people, that's where it should stay.